We often hear Muslims talk about something called the Black Stone in the Kaaba. What is the Black Stone? The Black Stone, or Al Hajar Al Aswad in Arabic, is a name given to the meteorite embedded in the corner wall of the Kaaba that was venerated by pagan Arabs centuries before Muhammad and has become the prime center of veneration of Muhammadan Islam by subsuming all the traditions and fetishes of the pagan Arabs into the new wrapping of Islam. By the way, the black stone, Al Hajar Al Aswad, is never mentioned in the Quran. According to the mythical traditions of the Arabs, this stone was given to Abraham and Ishmael by the angel Gabriel to be the cornerstone of the Kaaba. In, Bukha, in Quran chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, it says, And remember Abraham and Ismail raised the foundations of the house. Our Lord, accept this service from us, for thou art the all hearing, the all knowing. Termidi Hadith 2577 says, this stone was originally white in color, but became black because it was touched by menstruating women over the centuries. One should ask the question as to why would Abraham, the first monotheist and friend of God, allow the veneration of a stone? It was he, after all, who, according to the tradition of the Jews and the Muhammadan Muslims, destroyed all the figures of gods and goddesses that were venerated by his tribe, why would he now accept another symbol of paganism, a mere uncut, unsculpted stone, after all? The black stone is a comparatively small meteor, being roughly 30 centimeters in diameter. I would like to point out, however, that even though the Kaaba contained 360 idols that were worshipped before Muhammad, the black stone was never kissed or made an idol of worship by the pagan Arabs. In fact, the Kaaba was never worshipped by the idolaters prior to Muhammad. The building contained idols of worship, but the building itself was never an object of worship. The single most important reason for kissing this stone is because Muhammad did so. Bukhari, Muslim and Abu Dawood hadiths report that Umar ibn al-Khattab approached the black stone and kissed it then he said, By Allah, I know that you are a mere stone that can neither harm nor do any good. If I had not seen the Prophet kissing you, I would have never kissed you. This is an extremely interesting statement from one who used to be a pagan. His conversion to monotheism was so complete that he was able to make the above statement while his Prophet Muhammad was actually venerating an idol. Al-Khattabi said, this shows that abiding by the Sunnah of the Prophet is binding, regardless of whether or not we understand its reason or the wisdom behind it. Such information devolves obligation on all those whom it reaches, even if they may not fully comprehend its significance. Suwaid bin Khalfla said, I have seen Omar kissing the black stone and touching it. He further said, I know that the Prophet was especially very particular about it. I would like to point out to our listeners that during the whole of his life, Muhammad venerated, prayed in, and circumambulated the Kaaba while it was still a place of idolatry, containing 360 rocks, gods, and goddesses. Furthermore, the listeners should be made aware of the following facts. Nowhere in the Bible is the name of Allah mentioned. Nowhere in the Bible or the New Testament is there any mention of Arabia, Mecca, or the Kaaba. Nowhere in the Bible is there mention that Abraham, Hagar, or Ishmael ever stood foot in Arabia, especially in the area of Mecca, almost 1,000 desert miles away from Canaan. Before Muhammad, no pagan Arab was called Abraham, Ibrahim, or Ishmael, Ismail. This is based on the study of the names of all the men mentioned in the hadiths who belong to the pagan Arab tribes. If Abraham and Ishmael were truly the ancestors of the Arabs, it stands to reason that at least some Arabs would have carried their name. None did. Muhammad's name, on the other hand, appears among almost 80% of his male followers. 
one can understand that it was possible for the Arabs to have lost their original monotheism and returned to paganism. But it would be beyond logic or comprehension to assume that they also forgot the names of their most illustrious fathers. Nowhere in all the oral traditions of Arabia, the poems of the Jahiliyyah before Muhammad, is a mention of Abraham or Ishmael, of Hagar, she is not even mentioned in the Quran, of Maqam Ibrahim in the Kaaba, or anything about the Black Stone. The Quran repeatedly asserts that the pagan Arabs had no knowledge of previous revelations. If so, how, pray, could they have known about the Hebrew patriarchs that they claim relationship to? All the so-called traditions of Islam regarding the origins of the Black Stone, the Kaaba, Abraham, Hagar, Ishmael, Adam and Eve, who is not mentioned in the Quran, by the way, were concocted and put together over a period of almost 300 years from the death of Muhammad. Nowhere does the Quran even intimate that the Arabs are descended from Abraham and Ishmael, but only that they were the first Muslims and the alleged builders of the foundation of the Kaaba. Muhammad had to create for himself and his followers a worthy ancestry befitting the Prophet of Allah. He had the genius to plagiarize, plunder, pirate and or pervert from the Bible, the Hebrew characters, precepts, concepts, thoughts and ideas as a foundation for his new scripture. All these alleged traditions are only wishful thinking that have been fostered upon the human intellect for the last 1400 years.